everybody. Tonight we're going to talk about how to repair a creep on an old Bobcat. This procedure is the same for all 730 and 740 series Bobcats and it might even be for the 50 series as well but I'm not sure on that. I've never really worked on one of those but I do know that it is the same for the 730s and the 40 series not just the 7s but six seven eight hundred series all of those what we got this machine here has a creep on the right hand side what actually happened how it works first of all is i'm going to show you here on my machine the cab doesn't raise because it's a 30 series machine on the 40 series machines you can raise up the cab how this system works is they have this here spring down here you can see it there and it acts it gets pushed against this long flat metal piece here and then it's got these blocks down here there's one in the front this is the right hand side i don't know how well you can see it in this camera here uh, probably not very good but right here it is this is the block here in question the steering levers this is the right hand side which is the front pump and what happens is the steering levers push against these blocks and then the spring up here gets compressed as you move the steering levers. And then the spring pushes itself back once you let go. And the idea is that it centers these blocks here against the uh, swash plates on your pump. Now on my machine here, this one's come loose and so it's not centering anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset it and I'll walk you guys through the procedure here shortly. Now, it's important to realize when you're doing this, the engine has to be running so you can see exactly when the wheels move and when they don't. So in order to do this safely, you have to have the machine up off the ground. And uh, I've got it up on jacks here, jack stands. And you gotta make sure it's all the way up off the ground and that there's clearance between your tires. And I also have the front blocked up on a big chunk of wood so it can't fall down. And you have to have either outside space or your shop door open because you're gonna be running the engine to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the engine started and then uh, we'll go make our adjustment, stand by. All right, so before we get started with the adjustment, I'm just gonna point out what tools you need. Once you got your cab raised or the seat removed, whatever the case may be, you're gonna need a 9 16 wrench. And I like to have just a small hammer. And what the procedure will be, this here block where my finger is pointing, which is on this sliding beam, gets adjusted to the cams. There's two round cams, one at the top and one at the bottom of the uh, swash plate control. And what we do is we'll start up the engine and we'll see if the wheels are turning. So we'll have a look. It's easier in a cab machine where you can raise the cab, but it, the idea is the same. You just make sure that the wheels are not turning. And then what you do, seeing as how the swash plate on the pump is not self-centering, what we do is we start the engine and move the control until the wheel does not turn forward or backward. And you don't have to rev the engine up, anything like that. Just a slow idle is fine. And then once it gets to the point where the wheels are not turning, what I like to do is tap just on the outsides of these and bring this block up flush against this, uh, these two bushings and then tighten it down. And then once it's tight, we'll check again, make sure that the wheels aren't turning. And if they are, we'll just adjust it again slightly. So in my case here, what happened was that this block came right loose and it stayed in whatever position it was in and the machine wouldn't stop moving. And uh, that's obviously not good if you go to jump out of it or anything for any reason. So we're just gonna fix it. What I've done is I've snugged it up. So you wanna snug this up, but don't tighten it. Just snug it up so it doesn't really move readily, but that you can still kind of tap it into position with a hammer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the engine here and then we'll see if the right hand side is moving at all. So here goes the engine. <laughs> and we've got movement on the right hand side so we want to bring that to a stop right there and the other thing 
too is you don't want to have your parking brake on for this. So now you can see there's quite a gap at the top here. And that's going to turn the choke off on this thing. It's a gas engine. You can see there's quite a gap at the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and hold the phone with this hand and tap this little guy into position. got it adjusted we can go ahead and put the seat back in sometimes it'll take a while of fidgeting and playing with it to get it just right but it's actually a pretty simple system it only takes a few minutes to get at and then to make the adjustment itself but just always make sure you have the machine blocked up and that it can't fall off the blocks and that you're in a well ventilated area because you're gonna have to run the engine okay I hope that helped some of you out there uh, please like comment subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye now.